Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, first uh, meeting of the advi GIS Advisory Council. Um, so we're going to, uh, you know, just start diving right into it. Hang on, let me switch my, there we go. So um, here's the rough agenda. We're going to go through introductions. I'll give some introductory remarks. We'll open it up for public comment for a few minutes, um, discuss and create some bylaws go over some uh, priority topics and we'll open it up for a kind of a um, bit more open discussion. Um, and then that'll be all. Um, so uh, we're going to start with introductions. Um, so uh, a, I will start um, since uh, this is my show, I guess. Um, so I am Alfredo Herrera. I am the Geographic Information Officer for the state of Connecticut. I am very happy to be here and uh, embarking on a new and huge adventure uh, with the state. Uh, yeah, and I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Um, I'll pass it off to uh, Scott if we can just kind of go in order uh, uh, of the list that we see here and we'll go from that. Thanks, Alfredo. I am also happy that you're here. I'm happy that we're having uh, this meeting today. Uh, my name is Scott. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Scott Gall. I'm the Chief State Officer also here at Office of Policy Management, uh, and uh, we're excited to launch the Council today. Stuart. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Stuart Deland. Um, I'm one of two uh, GIS admins for CTD. I'm um, excited to be part of the GIS Advisory Council. Good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Ciparelli. I'm the Enterprise GIS uh, unit leader over at Connecticut DOT, and I think this is just a really exciting opportunity for everybody on this call to help us kind of keep GIS moving through the state, especially with everything that's been going on. So excited to be here. Hi, I'm Dan Chaya. I'm the GIS coordinator for the uh, statewide uh, 911 through uh, DESPP. Glad to be here. And good morning, I'm Gary Archambeau from the Department of Public Health. I'm a senior epidemiologist and I'm the agency data officer, and I'm excited to talk about something that's not related to COVID. Uh, hi, I'm Eric Snowden. I'm the IT and GIS coordinator at the Capital Region Council of Governments. Um, excited as well. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Hoover. I'm the uh, GIS director at the Metropolitan Council of Governments and like everyone else, looking forward to the conversation. I'll go next. I'm uh, Megan McGaffin, GIS coordinator for SLR Consulting, uh, formerly known as Maloney McBroom. Uh, I work out of the New Haven office. Good morning, I'm Thad Dimkowski. Uh, I'm the GIS uh, analyst for the town of South Windsor and the municipal representative on the council. Uh, and uh, yeah, excited to be part of the story. Uh, hey everybody, it's John Guskowski. I think I'm probably the only non-GIS person in the in the virtual room. I'm a, I'm a planning consultant with Taiki Planning Group, um, and I just wanted to note that uh, of the of this team of this advisory council, we have something like 90% overlap from the um, the G GIS working group convened by Representative McCarthy Vahey to make all this stuff happen. So it's just tremendous to have. The, the real the real GIS team that's expert and enthusiastic uh, all together again. So um, this is this is fantastic. Emily Wilson, UConn Clear and Extension, and I do a lot of different GIS projects over the years with many of you. And I have to second that with John. Like this is pretty uh, great to have everybody back together after many years of hard work to be here. So glad to see everybody and. Uh, be together. I'm Pete Samperi. I'm the supervisor of GIS operations at UI. Uh, I too am looking forward to working with everyone. All right, thank you all. Um, I'd like to acknowledge a couple other people that are on the call, uh, from, in particular from OPM. So first is Eric Lindquist. Um, he is on the call, and he, you know, he's been a huge help. Um, throughout my first three months here and in um, and in getting this to be created in the first place and doing all of the coordination before my arrival. So I um, just wanted to give a shout out to him. And then as well as uh, David Lukens, he is the broadband mapping coordinator and you'll hear more from him later. 
Um, he's been doing a lot of great work on broadband mapping and the like. Um, so now I'll just kind of say a few words, um, get through uh, you know, my spiel here, and then uh, we'll kind of get into the, the, the meat of the meeting. Um, so first, you know, just start with you know, acknowledging the legislative basis for the council. This is the culmination of a lot of work of a lot of the people that are actually on this council um, and elsewhere. Um, so uh, thankfully, you know, we have a fair amount of kind of structure and kind of authority to kind of do certain things and kind of talk about these things and try and put them into action. Um, I'm really appreciative of um, uh, the framework that we have for this. Um, uh, the next is, you know, the creation of the GIS office. Again, without the work of a lot of the people that are on this council, this wouldn't be here or and be as uh, strongly um, on as strong footing as it is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just to kind of run down, we do a lot of coordination, or at least I plan to. Um, a lot of these things are things that I have not yet really been able to kind of open up and kind of really start getting into, um, but that's just the function of time. Um, where we'll talk about some of these other things, you know, like the uh, clearinghouse and supporting economic uh, development efforts and providing training and outreach. You know, these are all things that I'm just beginning to kind of dive into. Um, and so far, I, I will have to say I have met with nothing but just praise and, you know, willingness to cooperate. And I hope that really continues going forward. Um, so first, you know, this is a big moment. This is uh, the first meeting of the GIS Advisory Council. This is a long time coming for the state. Um, and, you know, we should take a second to kind of congratulate, congratulate ourselves that, you know, we're here, we're made it, we're, you know, about, about to embark on a whole different level of being able to kind of do things in the GIS community in the state of Connecticut. Um, and then also, I would really love to thank everyone um, that was part of the um, working group that helped make this legislation to create all of this. Um, without you guys, it, this none of this would be, we wouldn't be here right now. So um, yeah, thank you so much um, for all of that. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about that. <laughs> so we'll move on. Um, oh, yeah. So the last thing is uh, the NISDRIC maturity assessment. So this is uh, the, um, oh, I forget what this stands for, National States Geographic Information Council. Um, I think I got that right. Um, so they do a kind of like an assessment of um, every state's GIS program, um, just kind of on the different uh, types of metrics that, that you see there on coordination, address, cadastre, um, elevation, orthos, um, transportation, geodetic control, government units, hydrology, uh, ortho leaf ons, and then just then they assign an overall grade. Um, if you look at the overall grade, it shows, you know, we're not doing too bad, but then you look at coordination and that doesn't look so hot. But that is primarily a function of the state at the time of the survey not having a GIO or a GIS office or a GIS advisory council, which all of which we do now. Um, so yeah, I expect this to get a lot better. Um, and then those some of those other areas where we, you know, maybe not quite at A's, you know, we'll get there um, and we'll improve those through coordination and cooperation. Um, additionally, I'd also like to thank Eric Linquist because he was the one that filled out the whole survey. Um, uh, while uh, when so this was the first survey that we filled out and you know thanks to him for all his work uh, for uh, doing all of that for us on our behalf so that we at least have uh, a benchmark uh, to kind of work against. Um, so now we are going to open it up for some public comment um, for you know uh, five ten minutes. Um, so if anybody has anything to say. Um, We'll uh, kind of maybe raise your hand and we'll kind of unmute you as needed or unmute yourself. I guess I'm just going to say, I, I don't know if I can speak publicly as a member of the sure. council, but I'm just happy to be here. I think this is going to be awesome. 
this is a long time coming, and I think you've um, we've assembled a really solid team here. Alfredo, I want to recognize Ashley Benitez has her hand raised. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Sorry that my camera. So if I had some problems connected to um, to the software today from my computer. So I just wanted to say uh, congratulations for this achievement. I am um, an environmental analyst, new environmental analyst in the Office of Climate Planning uh, at DEEP. And I'm also a geography PhD student. So this is for me a dream come true as well. And I just wanted to say thank you, Alfredo, too because you were part of our meeting last time. We were talking about the stable vulnerability assessment. So thank you for being there for us. And um, come to me with, uh, for anything that you need as well. All right, will do, thank you. Anyone else? If uh, no one has uh, any other comments that they'd like to give, I guess we'll move on. Um, so the next is the uh, creation and discussion of bylaws. Um, so yeah, we'll just dive right into that. Um, so I'd like to start off with uh, setting up the voting structure for the council. Um, I just propose that we go with simple majority, um, unless anybody has uh, an objection to that. Um, all right, well, I guess to uh, use the simple majority, let's have the council members vote on that. Um, if I can get uh, a simple yay or nay. Yay. 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 All right, sounds good. Uh, we'll go with that. Um, so the next one is the meeting frequency. Um, on this topic, I had, um, uh, I was kind of of two minds. I think eventually I would like to move this council to be quarterly, but I think um, after kind of some discussion with some of the council members and just kind of reflection on those comments, uh, I think it might make sense to meet bi-monthly, so every two months um, for the time being, just to make sure that we can kind of get some of the initial work off the ground um, and be able to kind of report back. Um, uh, does anybody have any other suggestions or a, you know, are we good with that? Well, for All me, right. I think that makes good sense. I mean, start off a little bit more frequent. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess once again, uh, we'll go ahead and vote. Yay. 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 All right. Yay. That sounded nearly unanimous. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so then uh, the last one is um, uh, the creation of working groups. Um, so I just want to make sure that, you know, we're all in accordance that we're okay with uh, creating working groups as needed. Um, and uh, I kind of wanted to talk about what I plan for kind of the composition of those working groups in relation to this council. Um, so what I was thinking in particular was to have working groups um, on any particular topic, um, and really the only requirement of, com of um, composition would be that a council member has to be on it, and as well, uh, as, well as a member, uh, someone from the uh, GIS office. Um, apart from that, anyone can be on a working group, um, you know, depending on uh, who uh, is needed to kind of interact with that particular topic. Um, uh, and even also, uh, also importantly, the uh, um, the person that is heading up the the working group does not necessarily have to be someone from the GIS office or the council. Um, does anybody have any other suggestions that we should include um, with this, or is or have any issues with that? Uh, uh, Alfredo, if I might. Yes, please. So. Um... I, th I think your approach makes sense. I I, the, the, I had sort of an organizational question, and sure. <laughs> admittedly, I I mean my my entire life is is municipal commission meetings. So so um, I tend to deal with a lot of you know Robert's rules and and you know who's running the meeting and and motions and seconds and stuff like that. If yeah. Are I mean obviously this this 
thing has been handed to you as, yeah. as your responsibility, Alfredo. But are, are we, you know, are, is, are we basically assuming that that you will convene and chair the meetings as you are today? Or, or should we are we should we have a structure where, you know, one of us is is convening the meeting? Um, and I and, you know, just frankly, just because of ADD, I would be more comfortable with sort of a system of of, you know, motions and seconds and, and formal votes and stuff like that. But so those are just just procedurally two questions. Yeah, um, uh, my preference is for, is for something a little bit more uh, informal. Um, however, you know, like if people would prefer the uh, the additional structure of motions and sections and formal votes, then, you know, that's OK, too. Um, but like I said, my preference would be uh, for something more informal. Um, Scott, go ahead. I was just gonna, I don't want to. Um... Cut you off. I think, um, John, to part of your question, um, in the legislation, the GIO is the chair of the council. So to to that point, I mean, it is the the GIO's uh, identified as the chair there. I think um, you know he could uh, set up to have a secretary, vice chair, other roles on the council. Uh, and I think it would be great to hear suggestions from people about you know ways in which you might see that to, um, uh, putting other roles in or. or setting up the bylaws to allow this to function effectively. But I did want, since you had asked about it, that one piece is in the legislation. Yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, I, I had forgotten about that piece. So I, you know, I think my my own preference, uh, Alfredo, is is that we should we should organize ourselves in the way that best supports your work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, you know, in, in to a certain extent, the idea of having sort of a formal vote process. Sure. Would, would give you that backing that, you know, the, the that this council is behind you in in supporting you know any particular you know move or or priority that you might try to establish uh, but yeah. however you know i think our, my preference is however we can best support you and and sometimes a, a formal vote is a, is a nice way to do that yeah um yeah i'm not opposed to having a formal vote on things like that um i would defer to some of the people that have done this a little bit more to kind of uh um on the mechanisms on how we would uh, accomplish a, a those formal votes in a uh, virtual context. <laughs> um, you know, obviously in person, we can all just kind of raise our hands and kind of say we vote this way or that way. Um, I just want to be sure that uh, we have the the ability to kind of go through and do that. So, um, yeah, if we want to, um, does anybody have any objections to going with the uh, more formal voting process? Uh, Dad had his hand raised for, for a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thanks. No, I mean, I, I think I just want to echo what John said. Um, I think that uh, having some sort of parliamentary system or having some sort of, even if it's semi-formal, um, yeah. will add uh, a little bit of credibility to this organization. Uh, and it will also provide us with kind of the documentation should uh, there ever be a question in the future of, well, who, you know, sure. who, what, and when. Uh, and how kind of thing. So uh, I'm all in favor, uh, as John said, uh, following a little bit of Robert's rules and orders. Uh, I think we've got enough folks on the council um, that uh, we can all uh, kind of advise and abide by uh, rules that we're all familiar with, uh, but I think it's going to lend a whole lot more value to the council, uh, to the advisory. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of that. Uh, I side with John. Okay, um, let me go with Megan and then Dan. Um, yeah, I was uh, going to say as far as the practice and, and keeping track of things, since we're on teams here and this meeting being on teams has generated a place to store files and there's other um, technical applications that you can use alongside teams meetings. Um, uh, we might want to look into something, you know, some sort of uh, mechanism through this meeting software to uh, yep. track and tally our votes. Yep. Sounds good. Um, Dan. Hey, yeah, um, we do a, uh, a quarterly 911 commission meeting, which I'm a participant in. I'm not a member of, but um, and we've ever since March of uh, 2020, we've done the meetings using um, teams and they do the full Roberts rules where it's, you know, all in, you know, all in favor of starting the meeting and all that stuff. So yep. and we, we just do it like, you know, like yay or nay on there so that's how we do it there so you probably could just do that still like you know all in favor yes and no and yeah but the other thing too is if 
if we have to do Robert's rules, that's fine. But if we don't have to do it and can do it the way you wanted to do it, I'm fine with that too. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, so what I'm hearing is that we kind of want to have a little bit more formality. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I don't know that I want to go down the, the road of full on <laughs> Robert's rules because that I think would kind of slow things down a little bit more than I would like. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, if we're, um, oh, Peter St. Pierre, go ahead. Yeah, well, Fred, we're, we're in the middle of some volunteer firemen. We're updating our bylaws right now. We, mm -hmm. you know, lawyers involved in everything. And yep. they, we always ran by Robert's rules that was in there. Um, they recommended sure. we take the formality out of our bylaws so that we're not required to use them, but we're still going to use them. And they said, that's fine. Okay. So maybe we do something like that. Not yeah. a requirement, but we use them. All right. That sounds good to me. All right. So in the spirit of hey. this uh, new thing, uh, hey, all Alfredo. in favor? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. One, one more. Sorry. Person. Sorry. I just I I should have uh, said this, too. What we do at that meeting is basically we do, you know, motion to start second all in favor. And then basically the way you have the, the it like set up where you have public comment and then you go through and then you have a public comment at the end and then you do motion at the end. That's all we do at that meeting. So that's okay. as far as it goes. Um, we all do, right. if there's a voting thing, it's the, you know, all in favor, motion, blah, 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 but that's it. That's as far as we take it. All right, Scott, go ahead. I just want to make sure I'm tracking some of the question, uh, the comments too. So I think if I'm following the, the discussion, it's it, it, the, it, you're, everyone's raising this not to like make it a more formal or cumbersome process, but what you want to do is make sure that when the council reaches decisions that those are recorded and that the support, hopefully the support of the council, um, you know, is recorded um, to, you know, memorialize those. And that I think like at this exact minute, we're in this transitional phase of like getting the um, council forward, figuring out what those rules are, but as it, the work moves forward and the meetings continue that when they reach, when, you know, we all reach decision points that we're memorializing those. Is that sort of tracking the intent of what people are asking about? We've got a way to record um, when there's a decision and the nature of the support for that decision, hopefully broad based support, but you never know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that seems to be what I'm hearing. Um, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I mean, as far as it, it doesn't, with using basic Robert's rules, things can still go really, really quickly. I mean, sure. I <clears> hope <throat> oh, folks aren't thinking you actually have to tally all the all the A votes and all the, I mean, it's basically if there's outliers, like someone wants to abstain or there's a significant amount of people that are against the motion, I mean, then you record that. But um, I mean, it's not like uh, in the legislature where you're actually seeing how everyone votes. I mean, I, I yeah. it, it, and I, I agree that it does clean it up a little bit and I don't think it really has to get in the way of any, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily will slow things down. Okay, sounds good. And Mark. Yeah, along those lines, do we need to like establish a quorum um, as well? Yeah, I was uh, thinking about that. I actually forgot to mention that earlier. Um, is that something that we would want to do? And if so, what would be the threshold? Any suggestions? How, how many are on the council? Uh, 14, 15. So I would I would eight. say eight, eight is a quorum. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, I would agree with eight. All right, so um, eh, let's go with a little bit more formality for this next vote. Um, so uh, all those four uh, having eight as a quorum. Aye. 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 All right, all those against? Uh, all right, any abstentions? All right, then we're good. Uh, eight is the quorum. Um, so we'll go with that kind of voting methodology. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up in relation to the bylaws and uh, the, the functioning of this office? Scott. 
Sorry, I'm just going to add one more thing because John made me think of it and I was reading the legislation while we we're talking and it pertains to the quorum. So the other thing that's in the legislation is the GIO will schedule all the meetings of the council or his designee uh, or their designee. Um, so I think that's a if there's a we determine what the quorum is, but the GIO will schedule those obviously like hopefully in conjunction with the wishes of all the members of the council. But the, those are the two things that are sort of assigned in the legislation. Okay, uh, Thad. Yeah, my my only other request is that uh, if we can uh, kind of fix the meetings to um, not specifically a fixed schedule, but let's say the you know the first Monday you know every other month or the second Wednesday of every other month or something like that, I think it'll make it a lot easier for uh, everyone to kind of fix that in their schedule ahead of time and hopefully minimize meeting conflicts and make it easier for all you know all eight or fourteen of us to get together around the uh, computer or table whatever. I I fully agree with that. Um, do we want to discuss that in this setting or do that over uh, another medium like email? Perhaps uh, perhaps like a Google poll or something like that to just get people's availability might be best to ask folks yeah. what works best for them. That sounds good. Uh, Meg. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, uh, actually, Scott, if you wouldn't mind, would you be able to um, post a copy of the legislation since you have it in front of you on the uh, on the team's chat under the files tab? Just so we can have access to that as we keep going forward, and maybe um, Alfredo, when you're when you're all is said and done, put a copy of the um, your PowerPoint up there, please. Will do. Cool. Thanks. Also, um, I just want to add, I am taking notes that I'll send out to everyone after as well. So everyone. Oh yeah. Knows. Nice. Good job, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, so, anything else on the topic of bylaws? All right, I guess we're good to move on. All right, so next is the discussion of priority topics. Um, so, uh, you know, here, uh, so just for reference, or in case we don't, for whatever reason, we don't get to all of them. Um, I just listed them all out here. So we're going to go through talking about aerial imagery, data acquisition, geospatial open data clearinghouse, um, statewide addressing and geocoding, broadband mapping, uh, an update from the CAMA working group, and then talking about some parcel drafting standards. Uh, so first topic is aerial imagery data acquisition. Um, so as many of you know, we are planning to uh, have a flight in the spring of 2023, um, mostly funded by um, ARPA, um, but in conjunction with some others. Uh, and I would like to convene a working group on this topic to kind of really start kind of talking about the needs and requirements and basically start the process of uh, acquiring that flight. Um, I would like to nominate either Eric Zonin or Eric Lindquist to be kind of the head of uh, this working group. I will second the nomination of Eric Snowden. All right. Um, so do I, get, uh, do I have a say? <laughs> no. No. If the answer is the answer is yes, you get a say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm yes. Happy, exactly. I'm happy to uh, to do that. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anything that uh, any uh, that people want to talk about on this particular topic? Um, uh, I will kind of leave it to um, Eric to kind of con convene the working group and then kind of uh, report back. Um, I will be the uh, GIS office member on this, you know, since there's not a whole lot of options for it um, uh, for the time being. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, um, Eric and I will kind of work to uh, uh, flesh out uh, who else is going to be on the working group and then um, presumably at the next meeting we will report back um, our initial work. Uh, I, I have a quick yeah. question on aerials and maybe Emily Wilson or, or um, Eric can answer this. When we got the contours from the last flight and they were um, they were you know derived from the LIDAR and, and uh, 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 parsed out and put up online, that wasn't part of the flight. Am I correct? That was something that um, Esri did uh, uh, as a proof of concept on their on their processing, would it, it was that something that we got, um, you know, as a as a as a proof of concept of theirs, or is that something that we purchased as part of the last? The night? contours were part of the purchase. Awesome. As okay. we did like a three D scene lidar scene viewer point. Oh, viewer. okay. Yeah, All but right. the contours the 
yeah, they were part of the project. Thanks. Yeah, that was yeah, that was that was part of what what Sanborn did. It was one of the deliverables. Um, and just on the on this working group, um, I think most of the uh, the usual suspects are on are on this call, but there's I, sure. there's probably a couple more from a a semi active uh, group in the uh, the user the user group the user network. So I okay. think we'll have plenty of people to to be to help on that. Excellent. All right. Um, anything else from anyone on this topic? Last chance. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Um, oops. Hang on. All right. So next is uh, the spatial uh, geospatial open data clearinghouse. Um, so. Uh, with this one, it, it, I'll give a little bit of background. Um, so I am planning um, through the GIS office to stand up a geospatial open data clearinghouse kind of to be um, uh, work as a complement to the main uh, state data portal. Um, so it's going to be on um, ArcGIS Hub, um, just because that's the technology available that, that's kind of most easy for people. Um, and uh, we, I've already started the process of federating the uh, um, uh, ArcGIS Online orgs for uh, DOT and DEEP. Um, I plan to federate any other um, state agency orgs that exist to kind of in, to, in an effort to facilitate the, the um, coordination and publication of data. Um, so all of that is in very early stages. However, I would like to convene a working group on this topic to kind of get a sense of, um, you know, what uh, some of the challenges or wants and needs of the uh, GIS community are on this topic. Um, and I would like to nominate Emily Wilson to kind of head that up. I'd like to second that nomination. All right, thank you. Um, uh, if you accept only, uh, I guess you can. Uh, we'll. Uh, I'll be the uh, GIS office designee, um, uh, and uh, we'll start working together to kind of come up with a working group and um, figure out, uh, uh, you know, like what we're going to do on that front. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions uh, regarding the GIS clearinghouse, or want further explanation on anything? Will um, Stuart and Greg be? How 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 do they? I guess you're going to figure that out. How their 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 portals fit in with your or their clearinghouses fit in with yours, right? Yeah. yeah. So that that's one of the things that I definitely want the working group to kind of discover a little bit. Um, I have ideas on how that would work. Um, that that is part of the reason why I already moved to federate their uh, RGS online orgs in. Uh, partnered collaboration um, so that we could facilitate the movement of those data. However, I do like in my mind, what I would like to see is um, the basically I have the clearing the the overall clearing house that has access to everything, but I want to people to be able to reach any piece of data, no matter which portal they end up starting in. So if they start in the DOT portal, they could presumably get to the DEP portal through mine or if they started the DEP and they end up in mine, you know, like it's just I just wanted the the all data to be accessible. So um, the, and I and I plan for kind of the the GIS office clearinghouse to kind of be that glue. Um, Emily, go ahead. Yes, I was going to say, I think there's like a couple levels on this. There's like the technical how to do that. And that's what <laughs> all of you folks are doing, thankfully. Um, and then there's, are we meeting the needs of people trying to find data, kind of what Alfredo was saying. So I'm happy to do this, probably from a higher level of making sure we're meeting those needs and what those needs are. And then we'll rely on um, some of you very knowledgeable folks to make sure it all works <laughs> and connects together. Right, yes, good point. Um, anyone else? All right, moving on. Um, so next one is statewide addressing and geocoding. Um, so this is kind of uh, a topic that is uh, 
has been a pain point for me in the past uh, as a former municipal GIS person. Um, and Dan Jaya has been doing a fantastic job that I never knew he was doing before. <laughs> Um, so, you know, one of the things I, I want to do, and I, I kind of want to talk about it a little bit first, and then I'll give uh, Dan a chance to speak. And then, you know, if there's enough interest, then maybe we can do a working group to kind of do some stuff regarding this topic. Um, so I, I, what I am envisioning with this is I, I would really like to kind of um, leverage all of the good work that Dan has been doing with the E911 address point layer in particular and make that layer much more available to everyone um, throughout the state. Uh, and, and in order to do so, that's going to require uh, a little bit of kind of workflow creation. And uh, so basically create a way for the localities that administer the individual addresses um, in their areas to be able to report to Dan those changes much more quickly and easily. Um, so, you, you know, I, I, I think where my interest is in a working group on this topic is to kind of, you know, brainstorm and really kind of come up with a, a what that would look like, um, both from an ad hoc, you know, like, oh, I have, you know, a, a two or three address changes here to something much you know, bigger and in bulk where like, oh, someone just made a subdivision with like 50 units and I wouldn't want to have to like add those in one by one um, and but still need to report them to Dan in an efficient manner. Um, so there's a there's kind of that little bit of work there um, and then working with Dan to make sure that um, the way he receives that data fits into his workflow. Um, so that we're not overwhelming him with all of these submissions um, and he can continue to do his work. And then in turn, um, you know, I, I hope to kind of really um, highlight that uh, layer in the open data clearinghouse, um, but then also leverage it in conjunction with a um, as yet undetermined uh, final form of a center line, statewide center line layer. Um, which we are planning to do some work with in conjunction with Dan and Greg over at DOT um, to leverage both of those layers to turn it into a statewide geocoder that can then be um, free for use by anyone in the state. Um, Dan, do you have anything to add or anything else you want to talk about on this particular topic? Um, no, you did a great job, Alfredo. Yeah, it's yeah, basically it's it's you know, like anything at the state, it's trying to get the data, you know, to like a squeeze into one system is always, it can be a little uh, problematic. So finding a way to get GIS or to get address data, you know, streamlined would be uh, much simpler or much easier for us and not having to mess around with fields and things like that. So anything that we can do to make it faster is, oh, is good with me. Yeah, so um, if it makes sense to folks, um, I would like to create a uh, working group on this one as well to kind of talk about um, how to come up with that workflow. Um, uh, Dan, would you want to um, head that one up or would you prefer I did? <laughs> hmm, let me think. Um, well, you got a lot on your plate, so I can do it. Okay. Um, so I will, oh, go ahead, Meg. Oh, hi, yeah, I'd like to volunteer at least sure. uh, to assist with that just because I've geocoded maybe hundreds of thousands of addresses in the past four years. Um, yeah. So I have, I have opinions. Okay, fair <laughs> okay. enough, no, that's good to know. <laughs> um, I will be the uh, um, GIS office uh, representative for the moment. I may delegate this to David at some point, but um, I just don't want, I want to be sensitive to uh, his needs of the uh, 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 ISP submissions uh, that are forthcoming, which we will talk about shortly. Um, so for now, I'll be the um, GIS office representative. Um, all right. Does anybody else have any um, comments on this topic? Or questions? I just, I just think this is a great opportunity, Alfredo, with, with the work that DOT has done and kind of leveraging some of the stuff that Dan had access to previously for us to really offer a lot of value. So this is a great, great initial effort, I think, on behalf of the council. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> um, all right. Anybody else? 
All right, I moving just on. Have someone oh, go ahead. Second it since we've been seconding all the previous ones. Oh yes. I'll yes. second. All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Sad. <laughs> all right. So now. Uh, Next topic, broadband mapping. Um, on this one, this is uh, mainly an update um, on all of the work that the GIS office has been doing, in particular, David. Um, so I will feed the floor to him to talk about uh, what he's been doing the last two months. Hi, everyone. Uh, David Lukens. I'm the broadband mapping coordinator. Uh, the GIS office, as part of OPM, is required to develop a comprehensive map of uh, access and adoption to broadband service in Connecticut. And as part of that effort, uh, we've undergone a remap of FCC 477 data and developed a data request for ISPs. Uh, over the next month, we will be uh, hopefully <laughs> receiving uh, ISP data on service areas. And at the same time, we're undergoing uh, some secondary data collection. Uh, we're cooperating with CCM to develop a survey. Uh, and that will be distributed by CCM and the data collected at the state level and then uh, used to create secondary targeted data collection. Uh, I'm also working with NRZs and other local groups to get local source data to challenge uh, and confirm uh, ISP data. Uh, all of this will be going up on a broadband mapping hub very soon. I'm working on it. Uh, and we have to have a broadband map by December 1st, but I'm optimistic that we can be ahead of that timeline. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments for outside of the meeting regarding broadband and the state's efforts, please feel free to contact me. I realize now that my email is not on this slide. I will put it in the chat in case anybody wants to. Um, Ted. Uh, thanks and welcome to the group. Um, I, I guess my only question is, and, and you can answer as much or as little of this as you want, um, is this work tied to the uh, the federal programming for uh, for funding for um, underserved communities with regards to their broadband? We are serving only as the information gathering arm for that effort, but we will be providing data to DEEP to administer any grants that they are uh, administering. Scott? Scott, go ahead. David, are there ways in which the members of this council could aid you in your work to develop uh, up-to-date, credible, relevant maps of broadband in Connecticut? I see municipalities here. I see uh, some of the tools. Are there things where like, the council could help in this uh, effort? Uh, definitely. I do think that at, at the moment, uh, it might be best to wait on any particular request because as we go through the CCM survey and get additional some start getting some points of data on where we don't know things. Uh, I'm hoping to send out some requests to the GIS community and this council uh, to say, hey, would like to do some targeted data collection. Can you point me in the right direction? Um, but at the moment, we kind of just need to focus on processing what we are already getting, uh, but I will be reaching out for additional context. Good. Anybody have any other questions on broadband and our efforts on the topic? So, I, if I if I could, um, the the you you said, David, that the um, the DEP is likely going to be administering like the 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 grant distribution for rural broadband expansion. Uh, not just rural broadband expansion expansion. Uh, the broadband. Uh, programs are, are all going to be administered through, are primarily going to be administered through DEEP. Uh, the Office of Consumer Council is also acting in an advising role in that process, yeah. but the actual administration is happening through DEEP. Okay, because it's it's a, a, a lot of small towns um, have been receiving, you know, presentations from uh, Mark Bowton and the IIJA programming, you know, the, the big the big initiatives. Um, and it, it wasn't clear at that point sort of how this was going to be rolled out, but it's good. So it's good to know that DEP, do we know who at DEP, you know, the little towns can start bugging? <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't tell you now, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, just between us, just you, you and you. Yeah, uh, uh, mm. Kevin Pisacic and the BETP, which uh, the what that acronym stands for is escaping me at the moment. Uh, he is my uh contact with deep and he is in charge of a lot of those programs uh he is not universally in charge of these things so i'm not sure if that 
is yeah. the perfect contact. But he is actively coordinating with localities. So if there is someone that wants to talk to Deep about how this is going to work, uh, I'm sure he would love to hear from them. Additionally, I do know that they are going to be putting out a request for information in time uh, so that all localities have a chance to provide data to Deep and they can make uh, they can administer grants with the best information possible. Great, thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, <clears throat> I guess we will move on to the next topic. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Uh, so the next up is the CAMA working group. So um, I realize that there are two people from that working group, at least on this call. Um, so I think I'll uh, call on Eric Lindquist to kind of talk about uh, some of the work that the uh, CAMA working group has been doing and uh, and how it relates to some of the activities of the GIS office and, and the GIS community in general. Thanks, Alfredo. So parcels. A uh, big uh, topic of, of um, big debate and interest lately, especially in the last few years. So uh, before I give an update, just a quick history lesson for those who might not be quite familiar with how things have evolved over the years. Um, until recently, the only real source of statewide or close to statewide parcel data, GIS parcels, um, was generated from special projects years ago. We had uh, DEP's uh, Protected Open Space Mapping Project, POSSUM, in the 2003 to 2010 era that generated parcel layers for a number of towns. Then there was a significant broadband mapping initiative in 2010 that generated another sort of authoritative layer of, of parcel data. And then we kind of got stuck with that 2010 data for a long time. It was never really updated. Uh, nobody really owned it. And uh, then we had we agencies started going down their own paths of reaching out to towns on their own to try to get updated parcel information for various projects that they were working on. And so you have this you had this disjointment across agencies of who had the most recent parcel data for which towns and just wasn't it wasn't efficient. So that's um, by extension, a lesson of why a centralized GIS office is so necessary. <laughs> but um, after recognizing that this was an issue, uh, OPM in 2018 submitted legislation to um, have towns submit their parcel data annually uh, to get that information updated along with assessment data from the assessor's database. And the way that legislation was written in order to have a level of comfort with the towns the towns don't actually submit the data to OPM. They submit the data to the COGS of which they're a member. Um, so the COGS, we work closely with the COGS now over the last few years to collect parcel data and assessment data from the municipalities annually. The COGS package it up at their level and then they send it up to OPM for us to digest and post for public consumption. Well, that's great, except what are the next steps logically? Ultimately, we want to get to a point where we have a nice, uniform, usable statewide parcel data set. And one of the issues that prevents us from getting to that point, even if we're getting the data from the municipalities, the data is all different. Every municipality does things their own way. They have their data, they set up their assessors' databases differently, they customize them. So you have all different field names across all different municipalities. And when you try to, to mesh all that data together, it just doesn't work. So fast forward to, to the discussion uh, is this CAMA working group that we've we've set up over the last few years. It's a small group with some great professionals, uh, GIS expertise, assessment expertise. Um, we're working closely with uh, CAMA vendors uh, within the state to uh, get assessment data standardized from town to town. So everything's being submitted uniformly. That is, towns are going to submit their assessment data files and all the field names are going to match and it's all going to pull from the exact same locations. That's great in theory, but it's been a lot of work to get there. So 
we're on year three of this effort and every year we've been making progress we're about to get the data for 2022 from the towns Ho hopefully that data will be even better than last year better than 2020 and so forth um, so that ultimately uh, alfredo and his team in the gis office can take that data and actually use it process it to create a statewide parcel layer a couple of years ago emily wilson was gracious enough to donate some of her time to make a um, sort of like a quasi mosaic if you will uh, of, of the parcel information on the ct eco website that really is very limited very limited utility because of the issue i just explained but it was a it was a case study it was a it was a proof of concept for why we need to do what we're doing so that's the long-winded history of why we got to where we are um the the, the uh, current status is that uh, you know we have these the small group eric snowden is actually the only one on the call today who's part of that group and i'm sure he can attest to the um the quality of work that's been coming from there um, but that's what you have to look forward to in the coming years as we continue down that down that uh, route and, and try to get um, quality parcel data for the entire state updated on an annual, at least on an annual basis. A um, couple of things I'd like to add to that is um, so I know one of the other initiatives um, that that group in I think is going to be working through is uh, uh, the land use category um kind of standardization um at least a, a definition uh map so that we can kind of interpret uh, all of those 169 different land use um category interpretations into something that's kind of um more uniform and can be kind of compared across the state which i think is something that's going to be hugely valuable for a lot of people um and then you know Part of that is so like once we collect all of that data, both the parcels and the camera on that particular front, um, the GIS office, GIS office is planning to kind of take on the immense challenge of trying to kind of mosaic all of that together somehow into something that can then be um, published and presented in a unified way um, for everyone's use um even though it only updates you know potentially once a year uh yeah so uh does anybody have any questions or additional comments on this topic i'll just add uh so uh, we're just updating opm's web page for this project uh and on there you know obviously we'll be posting the um the data that comes in from from the towns and the cogs for 2022 but we'll also have the uh, latest version of the camera schema posted um, as well as you know the current status of the project and where things are heading so uh, when that's ready i'll i'll, I'll have Alfre either alfredo or i can share circulate that link to the to the group here yep. emily go ahead yeah just one more thing to add like the attributes are a huge problem but the uh, overlap in geometry is a huge problem that Alfredo and I have talked about when we, uh, with the help of Stu, put the existing parcels together. We ended up keeping every town separate, um, partially because of the attributes and partially because of the, all the problems at the boundaries and the different ways different towns treat different situations. So I think we've talked about this, but we should definitely not lose sight of at least guidelines about how to do the do the polygons for these different areas at the borders and other uh, different situations if we ever hope to have a true mosaic of parcels. Agreed. Yes, uh, that is uh, some good foreshadowing there, Emily, because that is our next topic. <laughs> um, I think it's our next topic. Um, uh, yeah, so um, the next one is uh, next topic is parcel drafting standards. So I know this name may be a little bit misleading. You know, um, I think my hope here is not necessarily to tell people how to draft parcels because no, um, but um, really what I'm kind of hoping to aim, uh, hoping to aim for here is kind of to create a set of um, uh, or kind of come up with all of the different scenarios that come up during the drafting of parcels that could affect that could be kind of 
resolved in a uniform manner. Um, a good example is, you know, when you're drafting parcels on municipal boundaries and, you know, whether that survey includes a survey for the municipal boundary itself or not. Um, uh, you know, this is something that I would like to kind of write a playbook around and say, okay, if it's been, you know, if the serve, if the boundary has been surveyed, then by all means, please correct it and digitize it, but then tell us so that we can make sure that we know, update the, the municipal boundaries layer, and then also let your, um, adjacent affected community know so that they can, um, correct their, uh, things on their side. Um, I think that's, you know, things like that and just kind of writing, going through and kind of writing out all of the various different uh, scenarios um, that people come across in when digitizing parcels is important. Um, like another great example is, you know, like the, the issue of condos is like there are any number of ways of dealing with that issue. And, you know, I think if we had a, at least one or two accepted ways of kind of handling that um, from a GIS perspective would be hugely beneficial for a lot of people. Um, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, do you think this would be kind of build off the, the cadastral standard that was set up in like 2011? I know it probably needs to be updated. Yeah, I mean, uh, that would probably be a good, really good framework to start with. Um, you know, uh, uh, this is probably the, the, the other topic that I kind of wanted to kind of start a work group around. Um, just to kind of start, you know, thinking about a what some of these scenarios are or and then um, to like, what are some of the, uh, you know, frameworks that we want to kind of base this off of and then um, and then thirdly, how would we kind of dis disseminate this to the GIS community so it can, we can have um, adoption of this kind of parcel drafting playbook, if you will, um, um, so that, you know, people actually start using it and adhering to it so that slowly but surely both parcels and administrative boundaries will improve organically over time to the point that then they can be called authoritative. Um, so, does anybody want to volunteer to head up this uh, working group? <laughs> I'll throw my hat in the ring. All right, bad. I I'll volunteer to, to help with this too. I'm wondering though, as I'm sitting here talking about this, having, having we just discussed the, um, the parcel aggregation, um, uh, should we should should those two tasks be combined or is it better to keep them distinct? I don't know. I'm just thinking about so, this right now. Yeah, so the um that's that's a tricky question because that CAMA group has been dealing with in particular the assessment data in a really effective way. And to a certain degree, I kind of want to let that group continue doing what it's doing in the way it's been doing it. Um I see this as a related but kind of more specific project or topic um, that is, you know, it, it's highly related, but there, um, but you know, the, the the process of aggregation and and all of that is kind of in a slightly different space to this. Um, all right, that makes sense. Eric, yep, Eric, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree. Um, I mean, keeping the the attribution separate from the from the parcel lines, um, I mean, it, it, it's it's a whole different group of of people. Um, I mean, I think it's difficult enough concentrating on all the different assessment strategies that that we have in the state. Um, so, I mean, it, it may just be that the the parcel drafting part is, you know, it you know just it. You know, they just have to talk to each other with an attribute. You know, I mean, I think we all know it's it's, it's as simple as that um, as, as far as their interrelation. Um, so anyway, it's a long way of saying I agree, Alfredo. All right, <laughs> um, I'll be the uh, GIS office representative on this one. Um, uh, any other comments on this topic? Any other questions regarding this? Um, any worries? I have, well, Alfred, you and I talked about this on the phone the other day, and I just kind of want to bring it up in front of the group too. At mm -hmm. some point in some future discussions, we'll have to figure out 
um, implementation strategies for all of our working groups. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, which is, I just want to point out and recognize that we have had a, a long history of very hard working um, groups that have made tremendous efforts um, and have gotten really, really close. And I'm hoping that the mechanism of this group um, can help define the process in which we turn our our goals into solutions. I fully agree with that. Um, we'll have to definitely think about that, um, or I will definitely think about that. I welcome anybody's input on that, um, and we can kind of discuss that further as we go along. Um, yeah, it might be a topic ahead. for a future meeting. Sure. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, just on that note, I mean, it's a lot easier with the, with the camera group to send out a report that, you know, all you got to do is click this new report and it kind of spits out the thing than to then getting everyone on board in the way that they're editing parcels. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be a lot bigger of a lift to, to get that. I mean, if we hit some of the, you know, the major the vendors in the state that are doing it, you know, um, that'll be a lot. But yeah, the, you know, the individual towns that kind of do it, <laughs> on their own it'll be hard to get that i mean i know in our region we have people that were still using nad 27 and things like that um just updating parcels on their own for their own use not really you know understanding that it's all tied together with everybody so yeah that's going to be a, a big a big lift yeah i i am fully cognizant of that and i and um i appreciate that issue because i've been on the consulting side as well and has seen the 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 amount of variety in the way these things are done which is once again uh another reason i kind of want to bring this up as a topic and try and kind of create a sense of momentum around it um to help um to help eventually with that adoption piece but i think first we have to figure out what <laughs> um bad first then uh eric just in response to Mark's concern, uh, it is a heavy lift, so it's a good thing I eat my Wheaties every morning. Um, but uh, I think the I think the biggest key to achieving this uh, and to bring everyone on board, and I think that it speaks volumes to the work that uh, the camera group has done, uh, and uh, and Jennifer and, and all her her work. Uh, it's just the uh, the art of communication uh, and getting people um, to recognize the importance of this and and bring them all on board. Uh, and, and listening to what they have to say and valuing, you know, valuing what they say and how they do what they do and letting them know that, uh, you know, it's important for us to have uh, the similarity across the board and, and kind of the cohesion of uh, parcels and the way they're developed so that when we do try and create this beautiful mosaic of, of statewide parcel layers uh, that, you know, everything works together. And, and I think that's, that's just going to be key is just the communication aspect, uh, making sure people understand why it's important and why we need them to, to behave in the manner that we're going to ask them to behave. Right. Um, thank you for that. I, I, I'm 100% with you. Um, Eric, go ahead. Um, just real quick, um, and I don't know if this is a topic for today or something that gets semi-formalized later is that um, I'm sure a lot of you know that uh, these committees that were these working groups were setting up here, uh, many of them have counterparts in the user uh, network, um, the user group for Connecticut. So figuring out how to leverage both and not duplicate um, and, you know, get the most we can from from both would be would be good. Yeah, I I have been trying to kind of think through that particular topic um, pretty much the entire time I've been here because I know it's been it was going to come up. Um, you know, I, I I definitely don't intend to, you know, as Thad says, reinvent the wheel here. I I I would hope to where it makes sense for overlap that we can just kind of you know, leverage the fact that these have these groups have existed in some form in that context and just kind of apply them here or give them, you know, maybe a little bit more, um, um, you know, kind of like more weight, you know, behind, you know, with the, with, you know, being a, a associated with the GIS advisory council. Um, but in some cases it might make sense to, um, it, it, it depending on the topic, in my case, it makes sense to kind of keep them separate because, you know, like the, the, the role of the working group for this particular 
um, uh, organization is to kind of figure out the what and the why and then, you know, hand it over to the um, uh, the network group for maybe wider implementation or, or more in, in uh, information gathering. Um, so I think that's going to depend on a topic by topic and a working group by working group basis. But I definitely, you know, like if it makes sense to kind of adopt one of those groups from the uh, G, uh, from the GIS network, then yeah, let's bring them on board. Let's have them work here and let's keep going. Uh, Emily, go ahead. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, we're pretty much the same people. There's so much overlap. Um, I think it's just sorting it out that we need to communicate what we're doing here to the network, either through the meetings or the listserv or both. Um, and I would also say that the development of this gives us the strength to actually get things done. Kind of what Meg was saying, we've had all this work, but no mechanism to make it official <laughs> or to like, you know, all of us to get behind it. So I think the council is the way that in the uh, GIS office and Alfredo, the way to make it all official and really get behind it. So. These, I, I just want to stress, these, these are not competing organizations in any way. We're all the same people with the same goals. So I think if we can just communicate that back and forth, um, we'll all come out ahead. 100% agree. Um, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we should ask the council, not the council, the working group nicely, who is someone on the council that in the charge of it, by the way? Um, just, hey, we got this. If you want your people to, you know, anyone who's interested to come over and help us with this one, because I think the working group, or not the world, you know, the network, I think they'd be fine with giving up on something that the state's already handling and has more support and more ability to, you know, actually get things done. And just, hey, anyone who wants to be on this, by all means, send an email to, you know, such and such. Yeah, no, uh, that's great sentiment. Um, Scott, go ahead. I do want to add, and I don't want to contradict Dan, my um, colleague here in the state, but the state needs help from other people. Like we can't do this all on our own, particularly a lot of the things that rely on municipal or uh, regional government or other officials that we just do not have the sort of boots on the ground um, relationship with. And so like having uh, the ability, as I think is the intention here is to create work groups that have a lot of flexible membership and having the ability to have sort of flexible membership, make sure the right people are here, who often I think as Emily is saying are the same people you know in both groups i think that's the um i think that's sort of the intention that we're trying to identify to have the the right people in perspective so that these groups produce work and that that work makes it you know back to this council and hopefully into implementation but i you know i do want to like the state can't do all these things on our own as i'm sure you i, I don't i'm sure that's not what dan is intending um and we definitely need no. the, the help from others no. yeah no i'm just saying if the network is trying to create a parcel standard and we're trying to create a parcel standard. Why don't we just tell the network, hey, we're doing this at the state level with other partners. Why don't you just bring all your people, like just get rid of your parcel standard group and just come over to ours and together we'll create a parcel standard. That that's that's basically what I mean. And when I say states handling it, I mean the the advisory councils handling it. Yeah. And, and to add to that point, I mean, I think in some cases, uh, you're right, you know, it, it would make sense for the working group associated with the advisory council to be the only one. But I think in most cases, um, I think there is a place for both to exist because, like I said before, they may have different roles within that particular topic and, and in kind of like, you know, figuring out what's going on and then disseminating that to the user community. Um, yeah, uh, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, just kind of going off of Emily's comments. I mean, now that we do have this organization, I mean, how much, how, how does the, the implementation, uh, how much the ability for us to, to implement things change? I mean, if we came up with a parcel standard and we want all the towns to use it, I mean, what is the, the legislative mechanism to kind of get that out or is there one? And I feel bad for derailing um, Alfredo's meeting by bringing this up. And I think, Mark, the question you asked is a good one and we should probably to vote a meeting to figuring out implementation. Right? I yeah. kind of want to 
I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, think I definitely that's a opened good a can point. of worms. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to forward the slide because I don't think we're derailed. We just kind of seamlessly transitioned from one topic to another. Now we're in the uh, roundtable discussion about, you know, Which whatever. Which is totally intentional. Right. On my part. Um, yeah, uh, Mark and then Thad. Oh, sorry. That was just my, my comment. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Thad, go ahead. I guess I'm just going to make it a, a semi-official that uh, I propose uh, that at our next meeting uh, we devote uh, a majority of the time discussing uh, the um, ways in which we can um, devise the implementation of uh, any decisions, standards, uh, or proposed policies that we come up with as an advisory council uh, disseminating to all interested parties. All right. Uh, is anybody second? I will second that motion. All right, and we are doing that in the next meeting. Can we comment in the, on that? Yes, Alfredo? please. I'm not sure if we should spend the majority of our second meeting on that. I think it's a topic that we definitely need to figure out. Yep. Um, but we have a whole lot of other things going on at the same time, so. I think it should be a topic, but maybe not a sole focus of the council meeting. Perhaps it could be a side meeting to collect options to bring back to the council, but that um, maybe it's not worthy of the full of the majority of the time. Yeah, I, and I think there is a little bit of, for lack of a better word, homework to be done here. Um, I don't know if we want to do um, a, uh, if we're going to, you know, like if we want to do another meeting of the council uh, on this topic, or if we want to just kind of have a working group, kind of work through a lot of the details and then kind of report back. Um, what what's people's sense on that? Uh, go ahead, Meg. Um. I think that we have a couple options here. I think, I mean, one, I think Emily's right. We, we, maybe we don't need a whole meeting, but I think as we develop our strategies and go through our working groups, understanding how to get to the end um, will kind of give us a, a, a tailored focus. Um, but at the same time, we don't know how your authority and your position will, you know, play out in all of this. Um, so at the at the very least, you know, it's, it's probably something we should just continue to be cognizant of. And you're going to develop as you develop relationships and partnerships at the state. You're going to learn how things are going to, you know, get pushed over the finish line. Um, but, you know, I, I think that. We just have to be mindful that implementation's always been a struggle. Um, yep. Agreed. Yeah, um, Dad, go ahead. I think I, I just I want to at least point to uh, maybe not fully acknowledge, but point to the the 600 pound gorilla sitting in the corner uh, as we look kind of over our shoulders at the past and the attempts that the state has made with regards to putting together a, a GIS organizational body uh, at the state level and the challenges they faced with regards to authority uh, and the ability to en enforce the ideas uh, that they came up with. Um, and I think it would kind of be a dishonor uh, to to that idea if we didn't at least come close to nailing down or determining uh, what sort of um, authority uh, your office has with regards to the ideas and uh, that we come up with here. No, nope, that's fair. Um, yeah, definitely something to think about. We'll definitely talk about it in the next meeting. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to talk about it um, outside of the context of the uh, meeting ahead of time, I welcome that. Um, any other topics for uh, discussion? We got 15 minutes left. Eric, go ahead. Uh, you're muted. Thank you. Um, I, I just kind of want to uh, second what what that's talking about in, in that the previous iterations of this council even um, that was the whole problem was actual 
enforcement sounds tough, but it kind of is what it boils down to. Um, and the lack of the ability to do that was kind of the failure of the previous iterations. And um, it, uh, I mean, it, it it's a tough one. I mean, just thinking from just simply with the with the camera group, the idea of enforcing what fields that the town should use in assessment is uh, is uh, it, it it scares me personally. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, that's going to be the strength of this group is is to have some kind of formal formal way of um, you know mandates a bad word too, but um, you know just making it so that. You know, uh, groups like assessors can do their job, but yet we still have some kind of uniform, homogenized data to work with. Um, yeah. And I, you know, my broken record on that whole thing is, you don't need to limit the fields that a town uses. You just need to make sure they have the the minimum that you can that we need to be able to to query across the state. No. Right. Agreed. Um, Mag, go ahead. Um. The other thing too that I, I just want to make sure that we remember is that we have our whole assessment study that we did um, that Emily uh, collated and, and, and that helped kind of push all of this forward. So we have a lot of lessons learned from our neighbors that we can. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, there's 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 good data to be mined out of there that we can use when it comes to implementation, because yeah. that was one of the biggest things I think that we all kind of look to when we were looking at our 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 neighboring states is how they got it done. So we do have yeah. some some um, some information that might be helpful. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot to talk about on this particular topic, and it's, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, it's quite the pickle. So um, I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll continue to work on it. And I think, um, you know, while there is, it, it is important to kind of talk about it in the holistic context and making sure that, like, you know, that the actions we take here have an effect or have the possibility of an effect. Um, I think it's also going to be somewhat dependent on a case by case and topic by topic basis. Um, yeah, go ahead, Scott. I just wanted to add to Meg's point too that I think that the work that um, many people did to get to this point is certainly not lost and that um, I, I'll just speak to what I know from Alfredo, but also to Eric at OPM have been, you know, reaching out to the other states around us to learn how they got these things done in a more detailed way now that we have the staff. So both Eric and Alfredo attended the NISJIC meetings earlier this year where I think active participants in that community. That was the first time last year uh, that we've gone through that assessment process to be able to benchmark ourselves against other states um, and to be, you know, uh, active participants. And so reaching out to, you know, colleagues in Massachusetts, New York, the models that everyone had sort of pointed Connecticut to look at that's a process that um, I think is underway and if there's members of the council um, they want to point us to look somewhere else you know call up the folks in Rhode Island like how did they get this you know done or if there's a good lesson learned on assessment from Maryland or somewhere like please you know raise your hand and say the word because I think that's the now that we've got um, folks working on this they can go and you know track those down and figure out how did they get this done and you know we'll hopefully learn those lessons yeah Agreed. Yeah, we still have a fair bit of homework to do and a fair fit bit of figuring out to do um, how a lot of this is going to work, but I'm still very optimistic and confident that we'll get there. Um, so uh, I think because, you know, we're getting pretty close to time, um, we'll kind of move forward to kind of any final thoughts. Uh, anything that anybody want to say in kind of conclusion before I start talking again? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, I feel like this has been a very, very good, good uh, first meeting. Um, I think we have um, gotten through um, quite a few topics and discussed them at various degrees of depth. Um, and, you know, and and also kind of set up the framework through some of the working groups that we've just created to kind of really get some good and productive work done on these topics and kind of move the ball forward of on things that, uh, as I'm sh sure many of you have been wanting for a very long time. Um, so as we kind of move forward, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm, uh, you know, I'm as available as I can be to kind of talk to any of you. 
Um, and uh, yes, if you uh, um, to kind of uh, echo uh, Emily, if you ha have any interest on being on any on any of the working groups, um, please reach out to the to the person designated as the uh, head of the working group to kind of uh, coordinate on that on that front. Um, otherwise, uh, just reach out to me on any uh, any topic, and then uh, I guess we will see you guys in a couple of months. And um, I will work to kind of come up with a doodle poll or some sort of poll to determine what the um, recurring schedule will be. Um, we'll figure that out um, in the next week or two so that we can plan ahead. Uh, Thad, go ahead. Official motion to adjourn. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'll second that. So, uh, go with that. All right. This was one. I guess we're done. <laughs> who's, all who's right. Second? Have a good one. Sorry. Thank you all. Who's, oh, Alfredo oh. seconded. Did, 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 did. No, I, actually, I, I, uh, I did. Uh, John did. Uh, John did. Oh, John did. Okay. You're, you're speaking quicker than I could type. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.